session. Now we have with us Dr. Gautam Gautsami, Director, Technology Information Forecasting and Assessment Council, who will be addressing us today. And I request our Secretary and Correspondent, Dr. Thomas Franco Rajinder Dev, to lead the speaker onto the center stage. Innovator into commercial product. 
most importantly it also helps in filing patents, facilitate patents and awareness, patent awareness program. Recently TIFAG entered into a climate change business and I am heading another two important projects related to climate change. One from Ministry of Environment and Forest, basically to talk about technology need assessment. You all about that, uh, know about that. India has ratified INDC. That means India has committed some target to be achieved by 2030. What are the technology needs to achieve those? We are working on that. Another project we are working on technology, global technology watch group formation of six sectors. And these two important programs are taking a lot of time of us. Next. Uh, these are the uh, glimpses I have already told and today you heard uh, Dr. Y.S. Rajan. He was our fund founder, executive director and currently our uh, council is chaired by Dr. Anil Kapodkar. Formerly Dr. Kalam was chairing that and I was one of the fortunate guys to work with him closely in agriculture projects, Vision 2020 agriculture projects. So that is the, uh, the that, that type of blessing I got from uh, TIFAC, both Mr. Rajan as well as Kalam. Next. Now this the talking about, I, I was talking about this document, Technology Vision 2035 document. You know, uh, in between uh, when we are uh, working on Technology Vision 2020 Promission Mode program, a concern decision was taken that 2020, because it started in 2011, so 2020 is still nine more years to go, but let us take a, take a stock how far we have gone in 2020 and whether it needs updation. Because you know, when we started 2020, it was technologically, after that there are a lot of advanced technologies. So whether that, those advancements need to be taken into account in the whole journey. That uh, started with the technology vision, prompted us to do technology vision 2030 program. And I am fortunate that I was heading this. I don't want, want to divulge with detail about this. But this document was released in Science Congress, 103 Science Congress, 3rd January 2016 by our Honorable Prime Minister. Next. This document talks about people's aspiration, people's aspiration about security, people's aspiration about prosperity, people's aspiration about identity. They are the three broad pillars based on which the whole vision document is, uh, is resting. Our concept is if we able to achieve these three uh, key components of a life through technology, I think we will be able to give a smile to every individual. That was the philosophy of this 2035 document. And there are a couple of aspirations I did not talk about. And basically, uh, when we discussed about all these aspirations, this aspiration was centered around the, the six categories of Indian. There are six categories of Indian. Their aspirations were collected and put it in a different mode. Next. So that's why our vision statement is technology in the service of India, ensuring the security, enhancing the prosperity, and strengthening the identity of every Indian. That is the vision statement we uh, came out. Next. The statement is a very broader term. If we fragment it further, there are two, 12 key prerogatives we uh, zoom into. And these 12 prerogatives are here. I am not going into detail of that. But out of these 12, six are very much related to individual and six are related to collective. The government has to take a call on that. We need that uh, delivery from government. Deliberately, we have used the word prerogative because in the word prerogative gives a, some sort of a commitment from government. There are a lot of debate on that, whether it should be goal, whether it should be aspiration, whether it should be entitlement, but ultimately we end up with the word prerogative. One key prerogative is quality education, livelihood and creative opportunities. That is the prerogative I will deal today. Next. So you 
you know the security, prosperity, identity, which I told you, these are the three key pillars of the uh, 2035 vision. But if you analyze those, center point is education, be it security, be it prosperity, be it identity. The moment you talk about prosperity, the inbuilt component is unless you internalize your education system among yourself, inculcate good habits, inculcate uh, habits for neighbor, for people, for own country, the prosperity won't happen. So education is a fulcrum for that. You, if you talk about identity, there are a lot of technological interventions that are required to even to protect identity. So education again come into picture. Equally responsible for to uh, give us security. You know, the security in terms of individual security, in terms of national security, in terms of knowledge security, in terms of financial security. Whatever the security you will talk about, education is the backbone. That's why we have this time kept education as a separate sector altogether, unlike 2020. In 2020, we didn't have a separate sector for education, but we felt, uh, we feel that that was the thing we were missing. That's why it was a deliberate decision that education should be a separate sector. Next couple of slides I would like to propose are uh, altogether a different education system we are thinking of in the Vision 2035 program. At present, it may sound a little utopian, but if we take 15 years down the line horizon in, the, in mind, it seems to be doable. There are a lot of technological developments are happening. This proposition we could not make in 2020. We were handicapped about the delivery which we are, uh, we are going to propose now. Today we are a bit confident that technology will help us in delivering the uh, education system which I am going to propose in this uh, August gathering. Next. You know, when you talk about education sector, first we came out with what type of Indians we are going to uh, take into account, whom we are going to deliver the education, what type of types of Indians. Don't uh, spend time more, more on the number. These are basically a guesstimates, not an absolute quantitative figure we came out through the process. Some sort of a discussion we came out with the figure, but types of Indians are from education perspective. Six Indians were there in their main vision document. We have identified two more categories here for education perspective. That is dropouts and late boomers, which is very important in India. During the, if you see the statistics, at least in primary level, 4% to 20% dropouts are there in the report in different literature. How to address those? And then second is, one more component we added is, second chances and double dips. Many people, <coughs> many people leave education, after certain time they feel, no, we should come back. How to address those, them as well? So there are eight categories of Indians which we feel we, will, we have to face or we have to give them education system. Next. I would like to uh, uh, spend a couple of times over here. I will be emotional in that, in this context. You see so much disparity. Imagine when a child takes birth, he comes to this beautiful world with a clean set, slate. Unfortunately, his future depends on where he is landing into. If he lands into a very poor family, remotest part of the uh, country, then his facility, accessibility is different. Education, uh, mode of education is different. In compared to a person or a kid who is getting a birth in a high society family, a metropolis, a upper class, he is getting a, this type of schooling. Whereas the other fellows, those who are taking a part in remote areas, he is getting a, this type of uh, education system. Their questions are genuine. Their questions, their questions are genuine. 
They are saying, are we not deprived? Why are we deprived? Who will be the answer? In the beginning itself, we are creating a disparity among the system. Rather, if we are able to give a same, same platform to equal all child, then easy to evaluate their performance. We are giving a differential platform, whereas evaluation criteria are same. Their success is evaluated in the same manner. What a disparity it is. We are trying to address this issue first. Next. We are giving another level of example. These fellows doesn't have any formal system. Many of the fellows, those who are arts craftsmen, can we make them a teacher and make it a formal system? Since our system doesn't allow that the fellow who was weaving a specific uh, uh, craft design, he is expert in that. Many of us will not be able to deliver those. But they, they don't have any place in a formally in a society. Can we give them a social status, a formal structure? Can we make them a formal education system? Even in this context, that is also another component which bothers this group of people who are preparing the document. Next. So that's why our vision document is a little different. It is saying that achieving the full potential of every Indian. We are not talking about, talking about education per se. We are talking about every Indian is having a potential. Everybody is active to that. Question is whether our system is able to tap that and nurture that. That is the question. Each and everyone is sitting here, have their uniqueness in their character. That is coming from the hereditary part, coming from the acquired knowledge, but something is different from each and everyone. That is established in the system. But whether our education system or a social structure or a governance is able to identify the potential of each and every person, nurture it so that they can be a good citizen. Basic philosophy of this education roadmap is that. Next. So that is a very big statement, broad statement, but if we fragment it further, what are the edu education fabric we are thinking in 2035? Next. First hypothesis our is in the area of education technology development, which I will divulge a little later. First forecasting is the typical school, colleges, universities will be redundant. That we are thinking it may happen. It may it may sound a bit illogical today, but the way technology is advancing, it may happen. And we are to some extent quite sure. Next. Schooling will no longer be a large classroom, usual grade-wise stratification, common and rigid curriculum, syllabi, textbooks. Rather, it will be very flexible and customizable. Unless we do that, we cannot tap the potential of every individual. So education system has to be very flexible. It all depends on the capability of student, capability of teacher as well. Can we do that? It is doable due to uh, technological advances. Next. One important vision is there should be no school dropout. Why it will be? Because our education system has made so uh, complex, we are not able to encourage people to be in the education system. We are not able to we are not able to drag them into someone different, which he or she needs to be. We are trying to follow a single path. You have to uh, do the study, pass the exam, then only you are through. But the person who is not interested for even uh, maths or physics or chemistry or English, he may be interested for crafts. His capability is there. We are not able to harness that. So that should be the uh, first thing is there, there will be no school, school dropout. Next. Institution of learning will be virtual, 
meta and open in character. Why I am saying so? With the, with the intervention of information communication technology, it, is, it doesn't matter, location is doesn't matter at all. I am able to access a course online from anywhere in the world. I am able to listen a good lectures of any subject from anywhere in the part of the country. What is the need? Then, question is, do you need teachers? We need teachers. Absolutely we need teachers. We cannot get away with teachers. But teachers' role will be different. Let me come back. Next. Third, a fifth hypothesis is, all children will have access to quality and affordable education, independent of social, economic, geographical, physical and even mental constraints. More precisely, it is as inclusive as, poss as possible. We cannot get we cannot get away saying that our system doesn't support X category of people, student. So they are left out. What is the fault like to be lying with them? It is the fault of us. We are not able to deliver them a specific requirement which that child is need, needed. So that's the the argument it is, it should be equitable, it should be as inclusive as possible. Next. Delivery of language, neutral content to all individual is a click of a button. I am a Bengali guy. Why should I listen and understand the complex English language syllabus? I am a Tamil guy. How can I assimilate? the English uh, or other language, French subject, the way I would have learned if I would have tried in the Tamil. Earlier it was not possible. Today it is possible. If I be, if I was, I, I would be allowed to read and write or to explain, even this lecture in Bengali, I would have communicated a better way. If I would, I would have been possible to put a system over here, Immediately you can uh, log in and convert your my speech in, in your mother tongue. It's possible. So that's why next uh, vision is delivery of language neutral content of all individual and principal. So language preference will not be dated in the learning process. I am I want to be learned in Sanskrit, but our education system is based on English or maximum Hindi. So I am not able to learn it. Should not be that. That's why this is another vision we are keeping it. Next. Creativity and technology, they are the basic two pillars of literacy. I have a separate two, three slides on literacy. I will talk about that. Next. So role of teacher will change now, which I was referring to. They will become navigator, pathfinder and confidence. Now in the present education system or in the present development of uh, information communication technology, students are well aware of the subject well before going to school. That is happening. Earlier concept that teaching learning process is unidirectional, that is changing. It should be both ways. To teacher will learn from student, students will learn from teachers. Because students are getting a are getting lot of information over a name. Of course, there is a caveat that a lot of trust material was available. But if I see a lot of good information available over internet of a subject, so I am more knowledgeable. That's it is happening. I see even my, my son is in class 12. Now what is happening is, I asked him, why are you going to school? What is saying? My teacher is not accepting a theory which I am proposing. Maybe he is starting to higher, higher thing. Well, what, what happened then? Well, half of the students are not going to school. And then, how do you, how do you learn it? Your learning is, well, a lot of information is available. If any problem is there, we go and ask them, sometimes it is sorted out, sometimes not. But again, information is available over the internet. 
But this example, why I am quoting is, this is the trend is happening in, uh, at least I am saying in Delhi. So, teacher's role will be different now. It will be a, everybody might be hard about flip classroom. What is that? Here, what is the standard process is, we take a subject, maybe a, a chapter on uh, chemistry or maybe chapter of physics, relativity, teacher teaches, students go back, do the homework. System is going to change now. What is going to happen? Students will learn themselves the, that chapter and whatever the homework they are supposed to do in the uh, home, that will be done at class. Whatever the problems they are facing, doubts they are have, teacher will clear that. So it, it will be a some sort of a uh, time management. Why this process is coming in another, another reason? You know, in teaching learning relationship, absolutely depends on the knowledge base of the teacher, absolutely depends on the communication skill of the teacher. A same subject, a teacher from Bihar or a same subject which a teacher from here will deliver it in a different way. But what is the problem with this child? The child who is confronted with a good teacher, with a good communication skill, his concept will be much more clear than others. Why the disparity? Why the subjectivity of the system? System should be that, it should be uniform for all. So, my point is, lot of good lectures should be made available on each subject or each chapter. Teach, teach, students should learn that. Then come back to school, discuss with teacher, what are the problems are there, you sort it out. It is much more uh, a healthy atmosphere to learn, I think. That is our discussion for the low this slide. Next. So to address this vision, couple of challenges that we will face, we will, we will have to face it first. Content development. You know, for each chapter, content development for self-learning is very important. And nowadays, content development doesn't mean that only text. It means visual, it means infographics, it means videos, which otherwise would not have been possible in a physical textbook. If I able to, because I understand when we used to do, uh, learn chemistry, the mechanism from where electron is going from to where, we used to do it in paper, in a two-dimensional phase. But nowadays, it is available in a three-dimensional phase, in a movie kind of thing. Electron is going from there, from there, so it is much more easy to conceptualize it. If we see, if we have a video of blood circulation, if once you see it, it will be, you will internalize immediately. In our time, we used to mug it. Artery is there, valve is there, then you have to go to like that. But that system is going to vanish. Lot of developments are happening in, uh, and smart boards are being used, probably here also smart boards are used. They are loaded with lots of information about teaching material, videography as well as text. So this is making much more clarity, with much more clarity. With the same content, same delivery, same communication skill is going to throughout the India. Throughout Pan India. Whether a child is, is sitting in a ashram, child is sitting in a Mizoram, or child is sitting in a Delhi. Doesn't matter. But what you need that, it's very easy to tell that. But I am giving it for 20 30 my perspective. By that time, each and every village will be connected uh, with uh, energy, electricity, as well as internet. That is a three years agenda of the current government. If that is done, and renewable is coming in a big way, so energy supply is ensured, internet connectivity is ensured, then what is the problem? If investment in education is increasing, and investment in r and is also doubled nowadays. So I don't think it, it, it will be a problem. So first is content development and content delivery. Next, making quality education available to all, anytime, anywhere, anybody. 
that is the fundamental we are trying to propose next to create a modular education package to give students greater mobility and flexibility today a key student is interested both in maths as well as history he said that i don't understand chemistry i am quite good at maths but i like history as well can i do it that system will answer it they should to be as, as flexible as possible as customizable to individual needs that's a multiversity from the uh, concept is coming instead of university next provide a seamless integration to courser and technology based curriculum very important because nowadays we are more in, more accustomed to course material textbook how to integrate with this the new technologies it is a challenge next enhancing the cognitive and mental ability with learners with disability they should not be left out if they are left out then we should not forgive ourselves they are born with some disability that doesn't mean they are they are not able to get chance to learn to educate themselves so that is another uh, challenge next main thing of vocational education already government has taken lot of uh, projects in towards that but that is not enough the, the question we i pose uh, 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 beginning the craftsman hand handicraft person the pottery maker how to make them in a bring them in a mainstream is the answer of that next technology interve intervention to provide formal training of for this organized unorganized sector next already covered that then recognizing non formal innovator and master craft person as a teacher you know uh, in our society lot of people are doing uh, are helping us in fixing lot of current day problems day to day problems they are not formal educated but we they are not allowed to teach that subject to others because they are from they are not from the trade can we bring them in a formal system so that they become a teacher as well right? establishing secure efficient and authentic certification repositories for the purpose of educational evaluation certification process all together we need a different certification process i will come back next building a database of teachers with similar expertise that is of the import if we have a database of teachers those are similar in capability in uh, communication as well as knowledge base that will help us in for the management next now let me talk about literacy next what is our thinking or uh, in vision for the perspective about the literacy you know what unesco definition is literacy is the ability to identify understand interpret create communicate compute using printed and written material literacy or involves a continuum of learning in enabling individuals to achieve his or her goals develop his or her knowledge and potential and participate fully in community and wider society this is the catch they have to be a literate person has to contribute socially in community development in whatever the way is possible but what our india census definition is the person who is aged 7 years and above who can both read and write are termed as literate and those who are not are illiterate some sort of softening is happening in, in this front as well but next what we are proposing is what are the literacy marker for 2035 reading writing and communication and mr rajan also mentioned about three r reading writing and arithmetic the reading writing and communication of course it will be there next numeracy is also there numeracy means you have not only you know the number you have to understand the is used in day to day activity and nowadays what is happening is this even in class uh, six seven students if you go tell him go and buy 50 gram potato he will calculate what how to what would be the price but in our time 
in refraction level cell used to do it. That means numeracy is he or she has to understand what is the utility of it. These are the fine, these are all the already there in our system. Next. What we are proposing is we have to be equally uh, efficient in digital processes. Next, visual si signages uh, understanding. That was required because nowadays everything is coming in a signages way. Uh, that symbols. Next, and this is community awareness. We may be literate enough, but we are not able to understand what is right or what is wrong. We are not able to understand that. If we don't able to understand, how can you take them a literate? Don't, only they know reading and writing, we are giving them a literate, but he doesn't understand what is right or wrong for the society. So how, how, how does it matter? Next, that's why we have created proposing a literacy wheel. What is that? In the center, it is talking about literacy for 2035. In the outer scope, outer circle, it is basically the delivery mechanism. Either it is for livelihood security, either it is for dignity, either it is for empowerment, either it is for uh, self-employment, corporatization, public sector, whatever the case may be, wherever anyone can land into. But medium is ICT training, in traditional skill, in service training, vocational study, skill training, in uh, marketing, then created credited uh, courses, higher studies, whatever the case may be. And creativity is the backbone of all these things. This is the literature, literacy wheel we are proposing in 2035. One, if anyone falls under any of this combination, he will be treated as a literate. Next. So these are the different government scheme. I did not spend much on time because it is available on our net. So now, whatever quality is going to address in this document? You know, quality is divided into three parts, four parts rather. One is assessment for entrance. That is the uh, backbone of quality. If we our entrance system is not proper, we may land into different category of people together. The second is the teaching learning process. Third is the evaluation and certification process, which is output. And fourth is the research. If we see the entrance, for example, IIT entrance, what is the approach? The approach is how much you don't know. System wants to know that how much you don't know. That's why they are giving, they are being asked a question which is much more than with the level. That means a student who is appearing for IIT, is appearing for entrance exam, he has to learn graduation level master degree courses to crack those. Because the system is, would like to know what, how much you don't know. What is happening is lot of private institutions are built up. They are giving this training from this. A parallel system is being, is being constructed over here. It is not at all advisable. Uh, every child has their capability during age. A class 5th student, if you load them with class 10 material, maybe in the beginning years he will be sustained. In the long run he may not. Because there is a cognitive capability is defined. The biological system will not be able to accept it. But our current system of evaluation is encouraging those. So what we are proposing is, it should be by 2035, selection should be based on aptitude, interest, motivation, general intelligence, along with specific skills. skills. That should be the process for evaluation. How to do that? That is a debatable issue. That is a, again a uh, point for discussion. But we have to bring those uh, things into the system for evaluation. You should know your evaluation system should know how much you know, how much depth you know, how much you have internalized the system, you have learned theory of relativity, how much you are able to connect to the day to the problem. That is important. That is not happening. Second thing is teaching learning process. Teachers should be continuously upgraded their knowledge. Because 
so many informations are coming uh, through due to this internet revolution, IT revolution. So they have to have updated yourself, themselves. Otherwise, they will be updated. They will be redundant. The student will ask a question, you will have to answer it. Because a lot of research activity is going on for a particular subject. And unless you update, update yourself, it's very difficult to maintain the space of development of knowledge development. That is happening, actually, it will happen. Second thing is, evaluation of quality of teaching is also a critical element. How to do that? Because nowadays, uh, what is happening is, evaluation, some places started from the feedback from the teacher as well as the student as well as the parent. That is the parent students is the most important evaluator for the teacher's performance. That we believe. What is happening? At least I know few schools in Delhi that is their uh, performance in bus is judged by principal or a uh, head, head, head mistress and there are a lot of malpractices is going on. I, we have seen it. But you have to have a homogeneous system where students' feedback has to take into account before taking a decision about the teacher's upgradation or teacher's performance. Third point, there is evaluation for certification. It's a very uh, dicey area. Why I'm saying a dicey area is, nowadays, I mean, as part of the system goes on, we are, students are evaluated annually or sometimes biannually. The question is, a particular day exam will happen. This point highlighted Mr. Rajan as well. That day student may not perform well. Lot of external factors play into it. He may not well. That day he may not, he might have a problem, social problem. He might have seen a fight between parents and he is going to give exam. These are all of a negative impact of the game. But based on his performance, he is giving A grade, B grade, C grade, Z grade. 20%, 80%, 90%. Is it practicable? Should we accept this? Should we not have a different system altogether? Because it is doable. What is doable? Doable is we have to have a system where a student feels confident, yes, I know the subject now very well. He will go to a center, give online test, and immediately his result will come out. For any uh, student, for any grade, he will be given a password and he will be given three, three chances. He will be given three chances and within three chances he has, he has to score. Best score will be given. And this is because possible because of big data analytics, because of lot of internet uh, things and uh, cloud computing. This will enable us, enable us to come out with this type of evaluation system. So, no problem with the external factors. Student is, when he feels comfortable, maybe a particular time you have to give. Within six months for this subject, you have to give it. So, that way it can solve that problem. Third is research. You know, current day research, our research tendency, I also did my PhD, I, did, I choose the subject based on guide suggestion. And how Kai uh, gave me the subject? Because that was a problem for him. In Indian system, we never consider the need of people. When selecting a topic of research, we see what is going on internationally, which topic will give me a good paper in nature, which topic will give me a good high factor journal publication, we attempt that. Forget about what is use or not. 10% of research is going in, is being transferred into product. We are trying to hammer this point as well. Can we select problem discussion with the user agency, industry, common people, and then uh, you have to be composite. Then only a good uh, topic will be selected, R&D will be happening and it will be transferred into product. Next. Now, employability another uh, issue. What we propose is, employability doesn't mean that you are, you are serving somewhere. Even if you change your subject or topic of employment, you should be accustomed yourself to do that. That means our education system will empower you in such a way you can adjust in any field of work. 
That's the, that means you are employable throughout the, your career. Next. So possible employment opportunities, I did want to mention it. There are a couple of uh, ideas we have thrown. These are the areas where a future employment will happen. Next. Next. So now, what are the technologies will help us in whole proposition which I have proposed here? Technology listing are there, artificial intelligence in ICT and display and user interface, then internet of uh, internet technologies, a lot of technologies available are listed. This can help you. Next. This uh, presentation can be shared, you can have a look. This will help us in uh, delivering all the propositions which are going to propose. Next. So these are the uh, technologies are again divided into three categories, short, medium, long. You can have a look. Next. We have identified seven grand challenges. Like on main document, here also identified seven grand challenges. Personalized virtual tutors, Guru Shishya in an AI environment. You know, in the beginning, Guru Shishya Parampara is the uh, process was to follow. Guru is to teach and whenever he feels that Shishya is quite good, we can give him certificate, he used to get a certificate from the Guru. But same philosophy can be captured through artificial intelligence. That is the one point. Language neutral content through real-time translation and interpretation, universal interactive and adaptive simulation model, virtual skill assessment platform, data and analytics for system adaptation, multiversity, universal qualification uh, deposited. I will spend half a minute on multiversity. It is some sort of a concept. Uh, in, in India also, in 2012, uh, Dr. Vijay Vatkar started. But basically, in US and other countries, they are talking about in this. It is some sort of a incubation throughout the country. It is not a specific subject-wise. Any subject can be uh, nurtured. Any industry can go and do their hyper testing. Some sort of a more uh, flexible system. Uh, it needs more deliberation to even to pick up in the time channel. Next. So this is the one uh, I thought that whatever the vision document on vision, uh, education sector we are taking, I have proposed and equally I am open to learn, to understand how it is, it is dealing well with this uh, audience, learned people. If any suggestions are there, I am equally uh, open to modify. This is our thinking about future education. Thank you very much. The beginning of your talk, you spoke about providing equal quality education for all. But practically, no steps are being taken at the government level to provide that equal quality education. We have so many different syllabi. There is competition between state syllabus, CBSE syllabus, and there are still quite a large number of children not having access to education. So how do we address this issue is one. My second question is related to the artificial intelligence. Now, I am seeing it as a practical point of view HDFC Bank, they have brought in robots for customer service and to do some back office work. Last year they introduced and this year they have already uh, retrenched 6,000 staff. So technology should be to support people to have a better employment opportunity and instead of that if it is going to displace people and going to create uh, more unemployment, it will be a great risk. So how do we approach it? Both the questions are very valid. And the first question, which is the third one, it will happen. Because the way technology is advancing, and <clears throat> even from TIFAC end, uh, this vision document we prepared, we are not ending there. This time we are uh, knocking the different departments and as a result, four or five days back, 
Piyush Goel, he came for a uh, meeting in a other context. He came with a lot of information to talk about. But when Dr. Kapoor handed over this book, uh, sorry, I, I didn't show you, this book, our vision document to him, he just flipped through this in, in, during, in this podium itself. He was flipping through the document. What he did, he thrown out his own paper and he said that this document is giving me a lot of food material. I am going to call a meeting with at least five ministers and these, those who have prepared the document and few industry people. In July, he is going to do that to take out an actionable item and give it to Prime Minister because Prime Minister is very much keen for innovation, for R&D. And he, he wanted to promote a Team India concept instead of doing silo. So we are hopeful that similar exercise we will do. This is one first question, uh, answer to your question. Second point you are saying the same uh, problem came when computerization happened. A lot of resentment about that uh, fear about the losing of job. The some people will come on road. But one has to understand that when a system or technology comes, nobody can stop. If it is economically and uh, smoothly help the system, it will come in any way. But your point is very valid. What will happen to our manpower who are otherwise doing the job? But you, you have to understand that even uh, we need a high caliber uh, mechanic, high caliber manufacturing manufacturer, their sector will get a lot of people. So people who is involved in day to day this activity, they will be trained and given other job. I don't think this technological advancement will in any case a deterrent for uh, social issues. Uh, but the, the first step, your point is very convincing and bothers as well, but the way computer impact was nullified, hopefully this also will nullify. But it is a very valid point. Any question? Thanks a lot for the proposal. Thank you very much.